This portion begins with these key words. Kedoshim tihiyu ki kadosh. Ani Adonai Elohechem. You shall be holy, for I, the Lord your God, am holy. How are we to be holy? Well, let's read on, because the sages tell us this is one of the most important passages of the Torah. It not only tells us to keep Shabbat, honor our parents, not make idols, all familiar from the Ten Commandments, but it tells us you shall not hate your brother in your heart. You should correct him when he's wrong, but you shall love him as yourself. This is how a Jew treats a Jew. Here's the very verse Yeshua matches up with, the one about loving God from Deuteronomy 6. These are the greatest commandments, and on them all others hang. It always strikes me how it's just before the part about not eating the fruit off the trees for the first few years. Like that old lyric, the way you hold your knife, the way you changed my life. Bang, right in the middle of everything, there it is. You shall not hate your brother. Instead, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. <clears throat> May I have this Shabbat dance? I was like four, Dad. I'm way too old to dance on your shoes now. Well, then maybe I should dance on yours, because you're getting so much taller. <sighs> I sort of remember her laugh. I hope I never forget. When I dance with you, it brings her laughter back. I only wish your mother could be with us to see your bat mitzvah. Oh, Daddy, you're making me so sad. I don't mean to. It's just that I know how much she looked forward to it. To be able to see you in front of all of your friends say, here I am, a young Jewish woman taking my place, a daughter of Rebecca. Don't remind me. You know how much I hate standing up in front of people, even at a dot Yeshua. And anyway, she didn't even know we'd have it there. I'd be so proud of you. I wish Uncle Sidney and Aunt Jackie could come. They live so close and we haven't even seen them since Mom died. I don't think they'd come, Rivka. You knew how they feel about where we attend. I'm sorry you don't get to see them. Maybe we can invite them next time. It's just been so long. Lord, I pray Uncle Sidney and Aunt Jackie will come to the bat mitzvah. I pray that Daddy and Uncle Sidney will run into each other somewhere, and they'll get together and catch up on old times like brothers do. And it would be so wonderful for them to see me get bat mitzvah. Thank you for hearing my prayer. Amen. Settle down, everyone. Let's get started. The church has been trying to convert the Jews for centuries. It's just another way of saying God rejected the Jews. First, they made our Bible Christian, and now they're using this deception to take our children and make them Christian. Yeah. This is just spiritual genocide. They're not trying to kill us this time. Just stop the Jews from being Jewish. You're so right, Harry. We've got to educate the next generation. How all through Jewish history, they've tried to convert Jews into Christians. Sometimes 
with violence, other times more subtly. If they had succeeded, there would be no Jewish people today. Come on, everyone. What are you talking about? This is America. We're all about free speech and freedom of religion and that sort of thing. No one's twisting any arms in this messianic thing. Let people believe what they want. Please, let, let me get my point across. You're right, Stephen. We need to educate our kids and protect them. So what do I mean by the messianic menace? We all know what you mean, Schuster. We weren't born yesterday. Just tell us why we're here. I'm getting to it. Well, Harry. get to it then. Harry, stop interrupting and he'll get to it. Thank you, Patty. All right, I'm getting to it now. We want to bring this Yossi Cohen fella in. Yossi who? Yossi Cohen, the anti-missionary. It's a way to educate us and more importantly, educate our children. They need to be aware of these people and their agenda. Sydney, isn't this what happened with your brother? I don't want to talk about Marty, okay? What are you talking about? He did this after he lost Ruthie, didn't he? Alan, what about Sydney's brother? Of course, that's beside the point. This is about our children. What are you talking about? Maybe he should talk to Cohen. I mean, we're paying to bring this Yossi schmo in. Okay, Sydney, maybe you can invite your brother. I don't talk to my brother. I haven't talked to him in years. You should talk to your brother, Sidney. He's your brother. You do what you do, Alan. I'll do what I do. This isn't group therapy. Let's vote. It's getting late. Empty nester. Well, welcome to the club. Eh, it's not so bad. At least it's quiet. Let's face it. We're past the age of picking up after the kinder. Eh? Sidney, isn't that your brother over there? He's across the street, isn't that him? Here you go, Sydney. Will there be anything else? Uh, okay, that's it. On the tab? Thanks, Shlomi. Uh, you're welcome. Let's like us in. Well, I guess it's some kind of sign. today? Fine, thank you. Oh, are you ready to order? Well, my brother's supposed to meet me here. Uh, he should have been here by now. To tell you the truth, I haven't seen him in a long time. So maybe he won't even show up. How long has it been? Let's just say it's been a long time. So uh, I guess I'll just come back then. You're late. I hope not too late. Oh, you're too late. Uh, <laughs> always the joker. That's me. Man, it's been a long time. Mm -hmm. Want something to eat? Ah, no, I uh, I ate at home. You look good, man. I... Thanks. Thanks. I miss you, Sydney. Yeah. However, what kind of brother doesn't contact his little brother after two years? Oh, even wait, when just as... let me finish. Even when he's received phone calls, and more than one. Did I get a call? Yes. I don't remember getting a call. As a matter of fact, I think I was the last one to call. Look, let's not argue about who called who last, about how long it's been, but I do recall, now that I think of it, our last conversation didn't go so well. Oh, about Yeshua? You mean Jesus Christ. You tried to convert me, if you remember correctly. What are you talking about? I... Those um, verses they brainwashed you with? You asked me what happened, so I told you. I wasn't asking for a lecture. OK, can we change the subject here? Yeah, great. Aren't you going to ask me about Rivka? You know I keep up with your kids, by the way, on Facebook. Yeah. How's Jackie doing? She's good, thanks. Uh, and I hear good things about Rivka. I hear she's doing well. She's doing very well. At school? All A's, very bright, sharp girl. You should see her now, all grown up and beautiful wow. looking. At age 12, mm. you know she's having her bat mitzvah this year. At that place? That's nice. You know, she looks like her mother, I'm sure. May she rest in peace. But speaking of that, I, I must tell you, Marty, I'm, 
I, I can no longer keep the promise I made to you. You, you know, the one I made when Ruthie died. Um, I mean, I'm sure you understand. Things have changed. We, uh, we couldn't take her in in the event something were to happen to you. God forbid. But what are you talking about, Sidney? You know what I'm talking about. You walked away from your faith. You walked away from your family. You know, your daughter was brainwashed by the same people that brainwashed hey, you. You should have half the brain that she has, Sydney. I can't believe you would reject your own niece. She's your family. Your mishpacha. That has nothing to do with it. She wouldn't fit in a Jewish home. How do you know what she would do? You don't even know her. You don't even know her. Does Jackie feel the same way? Well, I haven't asked her, but I'm, I'm sure she would agree. Oh, okay, look, enough of that. We have someone coming in, in to talk about um, those things you believe. You know, you might want to hear him. He knows more than both of us put together about these things. His, his name is Yossi Cohen. <laughs> yeah, I've heard him. Twice. Well, he's good. He's very entertaining. A uh, regular Seinfeld. Okay, right. I won't ask again. <sighs> well, look, I gotta be somewhere. I... Let's not stay so scarce, huh? I agree, Sydney. Let's really keep in touch this time. Well, we'll plan on it. You know, you're my little brother. And neither of us is as young as we used to be. And I miss you, even if we disagree. You're my flesh and blood. I... Well, I gotta go. You know, you take care. I, uh, until the next time, okay? All right. Flesh and blood. Till next time. Yeah. Bye. Rivka! Rivka! Chinese! What do you know? A vegetarian wonder, Anne. Well, tofu will make you stronger in time for your bat mitzvah. Yeah, but I'm in the mood for chicken. Mm -hmm. Chicken tomorrow, tofu today. Speaking of today, how was yours? Not bad. Okay. Any specifics? Not really. Okay, when you were like 10, I couldn't stop you, and now I can't get you started? I had to forgive two girls today at school for being mean to me. A fool shows his annoyance at once, but a prudent man overlooks an insult. Yeah, you always quote that verse from Proverbs. Because it's true. So what'd they do? I don't know. I overlooked it. Sort of. Let's talk about your day. Anything unusual in the life of Martin Margolis? Yes, as a matter of fact, thank you for asking. It was an unusual day. How'd you know something unusual happens? You always know when something unusual happens. What's up? Well, what's up is I had lunch with your Uncle Sidney, just like you prayed. Wow. Really? Mm-hmm. Wow, God heard me. That's right. Wow. I haven't seen him in like forever. And? No. And we argued for a little bit, but we both decided that you're fabulous and doing fabulous. He remembers me? I hardly remember him. Well, of course you were a little shorter then. Yeah, a lot shorter. So, when do I get to see him? We have to invite them to the bat mitzvah now. Did you invite them? No, not yet. But, um, maybe when we see him next time. 
before I grow much more, I hope. Let's go. We'll both be late, okay? I got your toast. See you at three. Okay. Have a good day. Don't forget to overlook those insults. I won't. Love you. Love you. See you at three. clock. Rivka? Can you come inside for a moment? Well, how you doing? Sydney, how should she be doing? Right. We need to talk. Sydney, stay. Honey, you'll be living with us. What, are you crazy, Jackie? She can't live with us. She wouldn't be happy. I just told Marty the other Marty day- Marty isn't here. You have a better idea? I guess not. For the memory of my brother, okay. For now. But she won't be happy. She won't be happy for quite a while. And not for now, Sydney. For her. For her. For Rivka. Okay. Okay. Oi. What my brother Marty, may he rest in peace, put me through with this Christ thing. This cemetery, they, you know, they gave me such sorus about it, but at least they're taking him. Shh, she'll hear you. Martin Margolis was preceded in death by his beloved wife, Ruth. May she be remembered for a blessing. They shared a full and loving life Together they raised their beautiful daughter, Rivka. Seven years ago, Martin lost his beloved Ruthie. Life has been difficult since then for both father and daughter. But Martin rose to the occasion and was a loving and caring father for his beloved and beautiful Rivka.
Today, our hearts go out with great compassion for Rivka. I've got to live with my aunt and uncle. I don't know what I'm going to do. I mean, I haven't seen them in years. And they're nice, but... Oh, I love you. They'll let you come to the synagogue? They've got to let you come to Adat Yeshua. I'm coming. I'll be there every week, no matter what. I don't know how I'll get there. But... My parents, they can take you. I know they will, for sure. And then we'll see you there this weekend. I don't want to live with them. Pray for me. I know they mean well, but I don't like it. I want my old room, that big old stuffed bean chair your mom gave me. We'll rescue you and the bean chair. We're sisters for life. You know, with the kids gone, we have to have another talk with her. Tomorrow, we just spent seven days with every conceivable relative and stranger traipsing through here. Maybe. Maybe now is best. Ay vey. Rivka, honey, I know this must be very, very difficult for you. You've lost so much. You miss your- I miss everything. Everything, Aunt Jackie. I don't belong here. I like you. But Dad and Uncle Sidney haven't even talked in years. I feel like, like- That was wrong. I can't argue with that. We, we talked just the other day. Sydney, I don't think she means He told me, Uncle Sydney. I know we were going to get together, but that doesn't change how I feel. Rivka, you're our niece. And even though we haven't had the chance to see you grow up to be so pretty and so smart, we love you and we want you to live with us. It would be an honor. Right. That's right. Your dad and I agreed. We discussed it. A few days ago? You talked about this a few days ago? Well, we discussed the possibility. Then it's destined. It's Bashir. I don't know about that. What about my friends, my synagogue, my life? Your friends are your friends. You choose your friends. We would never take that away from you. But we also hope you'll make new friends, besides the ones at school and, and your other friends. I guess I have to say this. We're a family, a mishpacha. And we have a synagogue. Families go to synagogue together. That's the way it's supposed to be. You can see your friends at other times, but we want you to come to synagogue with us. I don't want to talk right now. Okay, Rivka, listen. Anything you need or want. I think I want to sleep now. I'm tired. I think that's a good idea. It's been a very difficult day. Nikki Blavitz, nice to meet you. 
Hi, I'm Rivka. Sorry about your dad. I hope you join our YJA group, Young Jewish Alliance. It's uh, a great group. Yeah, sure. Are you all in it? Yeah, we are. Who was Jacob Bluestein? Some founder or something? You mean who is Jacob Bluestein? He's the richest man in the synagogue. That's a sadaka, like money to give, if you know what I mean. Yeah. He's got his name on like five rooms all over the place. Blue Stein Chapel, Blue Stein Men's Room. That was a joke. He's right over there. Oh, I get it. Because I know of this big church that has an old folks home that's named after some rich guy like that. What? Never mind. Well, did you enjoy this service? It was okay. Well, seemed like you did. You knew everything. You chanted like a canter. <laughs> Your uncle's saying he's proud of you, aren't you, Sydney? Well, it's um, it's a mitzvah to have, uh, you know. I'm studying for my bat mitzvah at a dot Yeshua. Hmm. Uh, I see. Rivka, it would mean so much to us. We would be so honored if you would have your bat mitzvah with us, Ebene Israel. Maybe you could think about it. Let us know. Your friends from your, from your chapel could come and, well, I'm sure Rabbi Sign and Dr. Posner would work with you. Yeah, uh, listen, I can't talk right now. Yeah, yeah, I'll call you later, okay? Um, about half an hour. Okay. Okay, all right, bye. You can talk to your friend. It was my rabbi. Hmm. He's calling on Shabbat? I never heard of a rabbi calling a congregant on Shabbat. Well... I don't know. He's like a friend. I'm sure he's very nice. Do you know Jacob Bluestein? You mean the Jacob Bluestein in our synagogue? <laughs> There's another? <laughs> I didn't think there was room for two. <laughs> yes, that one. <laughs> Everyone knows Jacob Bluestein. Oh. Well, don't you think he should give his money kind of without letting his right hand know what his left is doing? Hmm. Like, <laughs> more private. It's just, I mean, that sign over the door, it's just, well, I know of this big church with an old folks home that's named after some rich... Never mind. Huh. That's a very wise saying, Rivka. You know... Not letting his right hand know what his left hand is doing? It, very rabbinic. <laughs> you know, there are a lot of women rabbis these days. Sydney, stop joking. Ah, I wasn't <laughs> joking. A rabbi? Not me, Uncle Sydney. Uh, I hate public speaking. Rabbi, um, my aunt and uncle want me to go to their synagogue and be bat mitzvah there. I see. And what do you think? I don't know. I don't know what to do. Must be a little overwhelming. Are they putting pressure of any kind on you? No, no. They're trying to be nice. They want me to be kind of like family. You know, go where they go. Right in the middle of your bat mitzvah classes? It's a little strange. And I don't know what Dad would want me to do. I'm confused. They want all the kids from Adat Yeshua to come. I see. Okay, how about your fear of public speaking? I'd rather do it somewhere where I know the people, but... Maybe the Lord wants me to do it. I see. Well, I know you could do it there with your aunt and uncle. You could show them what you've learned, Rivka. Will this be the same weekend? The same portion? They haven't talked about that yet. Daddy? 
I'm ready to double jump your king. I hear Chava. I'll call you next week. I'll try to come see you soon. I can call the office and set up an appointment, okay? That would be great, Rivka. Bye. Here, let me help with that. Come on. Oh, sure. I got, I got it. Thanks, Uncle Sydney. It's, it's pretty heavy. Yeah. Okay. Almost done. I'll go get the last of it. Okay. Your father would roll over in his grave if he knew that a family member were reading the New Testament in this house. Shh. When you do sadaka, good deeds like giving, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your sadaka may be in secret, and your father, who sees in secret, shall reward you. I uh, think these uh, YJA meetings are over at about um, nine. You know what? I, I haven't been getting the announcements for a long time. So uh, I do think it would be a, a good idea for you to maybe get acquainted with some of the kids at the synagogue, don't you? I guess so. Uncle Sydney, they said it's over at 9 o'clock. Please don't be late. I won't. I, um, uh, I like driving someone to the, uh, uh to these meetings, um, again. Especially you. Have a good time. I'll see you at 9. You want a Coke, Rivka? No, thanks. I can get it. Of course you can. You have two hands. How old did you say you were? I didn't say. And? And I'm 12. Almost 13. Oh, you're studying for your bat mitzvah then? Yes. Where'd you say you went to synagogue? I didn't. Well? Well, what? Well, where'd you go to synagogue? Hey, Nikki. Hey, man. My father and I went to a dot Yeshua. Ever heard of it? No, never heard of it. That may be because it's messianic. The Yeshua part is Hebrew for salvation, as in Jesus. Any other questions? I didn't think so. Hey, Nikki. Hey, how's it going? Um, is Sarah around? Uh, yeah, she's back there. Cool, thanks. What's with you? Just when does this thing start? Soon. So tell me about the synagogue you go to. Are you serious? Yeah. It sounds cool. Well, some people think it's the opposite of cool. Like, not even a Jewish thing. You seem totally Jewish to me. Well, I am. So, I think I'll take a seat now. Everybody come over here. 
Rivka's gonna tell us about her synagogue. Hickey, please don't. What are you afraid of? She's a messianic. Does everyone know what that means? I think I do. Sure. Rivka's gonna tell us what she believes. Aren't you, Rivka? Well, I could try to explain it if you guys wanted me to. Yeah. Well, how was it? Okay. Yeah, it was okay. That's good. That was the Plavitz boy, wasn't it? I think so. What's his name? Nikki. Oh. Well, 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 I think it's Nikki. Okay, so I was at this YJ meeting, and it started with this cute boy named Nikki Blavitz. What? Yeah, and he calls everyone over, and they all ask me a million questions about Messianic Judaism, etc., etc. I'd never seen anything like it. Their questions were really interesting, like, what do you believe, and what's your service like over there, and well, I don't know. I bet he's gorgeous. Yeah, he is. And Rena, I just lost my dad. Read Hamlet. He wasn't ready for his mom to remarry, and I'm not ready to like Nikki. Hmm, I hear ya. Even though I haven't read Hamlet like you advanced English lit folks, I hear my Rivka coming back to life. You sound almost happy. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. I guess so. I do feel a little better. A little. I still really miss Dad so much. I'm here for you. I'll talk to you later. Bye. Oh, Rivka, we miss you so much at the synagogue. I'll be back. I've just got to go to their synagogue for now. I think they're trying to help me just kind of in their own way. Their own way doesn't seem very fair to me. I want you to be bat mitzvah at that Yeshua with us. It's where you belong. It'll be okay, Karen. Did you tell her about what happened the other day? About Nikki and his friends? Who's Nikki? No, I didn't. I didn't get a chance, it's been so crazy. What happened? Tell me what happened. Well, there's this guy at their synagogue named Nikki, and I admit he's really cute. Hey, there he is. Nikki! Nikki! Hey, what brings you here? Well, these are my friends from Adat Yeshua. Rena and Karen. Karen with a Y. Oh, I get it. Instead of with an E. I'm learning a lot about names. Yeshua is Jesus. Mm -hmm. Karen is Karen, but with a Y. Well, this is Jeff Kushner with a K. And Sarah's back there catching up. Are you joking or what? Because if you're joking, it's not funny. I'm observing and I'm learning, seriously. Well, Rivka here is telling us that she's having her bat mitzvah at your synagogue. Wow. I guess you'll start by studying with Dr. Posner. Well, I've actually already started studying at Adat Yeshua. Well, you might have some catching up to do. What do you mean? I don't know. I'm just saying that there are 
probably some things that you haven't covered. What she hasn't covered at Adat Yeshua can stay uncovered. Okay, I'm sure that's true. Well, um, we probably ought to get going, so I'll see y'all soon. That was rude. Sorry. I guess he just got to me with his little jokes or whatever they are. I don't know if I trust him, Rivka. I don't know. He seems okay to me. He is just too cute. <sighs> Nikki with a Y. Is that all you think about? So? I found this under her mattress. So? It was in the box. We knew she had it. That's not what bothers me. So what bothers you? She feels like she has to hide it. Do you blame her? We don't believe in the New Testament here. It's not good for her to feel like she has to hide things from us when she's just lost her father. Okay, psychologist. I'm listening. I feel we should tell her she doesn't have to hide it. Um, do we have to? Can't we just leave well enough alone? Do you want her feeling like she has to hide things around us? Maybe someday she'll feel like she has to hide something else, like drugs, or something else like a boyfriend. She shouldn't feel like she has to keep any secrets. Okay, okay, that's a good point. But I think it would be a good idea for her to speak to Rabbi Stein. We can't force her. Of course her. we can't force her, but we can ask her. We can do that. I can do that. You stay out of it, please. It'd be my pleasure but I still think she should talk to him. He obviously likes Rivka. That is not true. And anyway, my father just died. What does that have to do with it? It's kind of, well, it's kind of a Hamlet thing. What? You guys want to come over? I want you guys to come over and brighten things up for me. I'm sorry, I can't. I gotta go do some chores my mom asked me to do. Me there, I've got homework. 10 page paper to buy tomorrow. Okay, I understand. Abandon your friend for trivial activity. Oh, you're being a Jewish mother. Somebody around here has to be. Love you. <laughs> me too. <laughs> You surprised me. You surprised me too. Oh, that. Aunt Jackie, do you always make a habit of going through my things? I was changing the sheets on your bed, honey. I happened to see it there. I wanted you to know I that. I see. Well, if it's a problem, I can live with some friends of mine. You don't understand. Well, I understand. I'm sure you don't like me having this in your house. No. I put it on the table so you would know you don't have to hide it. I don't want you to feel you have to hide anything around us. Oh. I appreciate that, but I think it would be better if I made my own bed. Okay, you can make your own bed and put your old sheets in the hall. Thank you for understanding, Aunt Jackie. I'll take my Bible now, unless you want to borrow it. No, no, that's okay. I read parts of the New Testament in college. I... Thanks anyway. You think you know what's in the New Covenant just because you read a few verses in college? You don't even know. You want me to get rid of it? Here! Stop! Sydney? You're going to see the rabbi. I promised my brother seven years ago that we would take you in in case anything happened. Then he got into... into into this Jesus Mishigas, to each his own. Now, we're still glad to have you here, but it won't hurt you to see the rabbi. Uh, you are going to our synagogue. Sydney, calm down. I am calm. I'm just politely insisting. You know what? I'll even go with you. No, thanks. That's worse. Rabbi Khan, could you... Please pray for me. 
I'm about to go see Rabbi Stein, and I have no idea how it's going to go. I'm a little nervous. I have such confidence in you. Let me just say, I know Rabbi Stein. He's a nice man. You know who you are and what you believe. And I'm sure that Rabbi Stein is really sensitive to what you've been through. I didn't want to see him. I just want to be left alone. I, I miss Dad so much. But Uncle Sidney insisted. Anyway, I'm almost to the building now. Okay, then. Let me pray. Lord God of Israel, you know what Rivka's been through. You know the spirit you placed in her. It's been bruised. It's been hurt. But you tell us in Isaiah, a bruised reed you wouldn't break. A smoldering wick you would not extinguish. Go with her now into Rabbi Stein's office. Oh, Rabbi, I'm here. Okay, but I'm not exactly the rabbi. I just look like him. I'm just kidding. Could a good executive secretary be of any help to you? I think I have an appointment with the rabbi, um, Rivka Margolis. Yes, you do. It's right here on my computer. He is expecting you, so you can go ahead and go on in. It's right there. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Rivka, it's very nice to meet you. I'm so glad you called for an appointment. I've been looking forward to this. Your aunt and uncle speak so well of you. I'm, I am so sorry about your loss. Thank you. I know it's been hard. Please. Rivka, I want you to know that anything we discuss today stays in this room. Well, thank you. But, no offense or anything, but I don't know if I can keep the same promise. I mean, with not No, 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 it's not what I mean. It's on my end. I just want you to know that I will keep confidence. I won't demand anything on your end. Okay. And actually, I didn't want to come here today. It was my Uncle Sidney's idea. Oh, I understand. Thank you for being honest. How are you holding up? Well, not very well. Of course. I can't imagine the shock. You know, Sometimes some counseling can help. I think I'll be okay. Uncle Sidney and Aunt Jackie haven't mentioned anything of that sort, but I'll be okay. Well, I know you will, but still counseling can help sometimes. How is it living there? Well, they're nice and all, but I know you know about it, Dot Yeshua. Yes, of course. They found my New Testament in my bedroom and... I understand. It's awkward. I'm sure it's awkward for all of you. But I appreciate their taking me in and all. Well, listen, Rivka, you're a very grown-up 12-year-old. Yes, well... I thought you might want to know that... I did have some conversations with Nikki Blavitz and some others about my synagogue. Ah, yes, Nikki Blavitz. I understand he introduced himself to you. Of course, I remember when he was just a baby. Oh, growing up so fast. And he's very bright, just as you are. A very bright and curious young man. Matter of fact, he told his parents the two of you had quite a talk. Then you know. Yes, we did. Uh, uh, oh, I mean, well, I know you're the rabbi here, and well, I, I didn't mean to, but, but he asked all the questions, and I wasn't going to answer them, but. It's okay, I understand. He asked all the questions, I'm sure. He's very sharp, very inquisitive. 
With you having your bat mitzvah here so soon, maybe it'd be best to just hold off on those kinds of religious discussions. It's just a thought. Sure. Of course. Not that I'm ashamed of what I believe or anything. No, I would not want you to be ashamed. Your father wouldn't want you to be. No, he wouldn't. But as far as the bat mitzvah is concerned, I don't do too well with public speaking. I told Rabbi Khan that, and we agreed that I'd go ahead with it, and he'd pray for me. But it may be a little harder for me here. Oh yes, I understand. I'm sure Jerry helped you. That, that's what I call him. I, I don't call him rabbi. But you know what, Rivka? I think it would really be good for you to have your bat mitzvah here. I think it would help you build confidence. So you'll meet with Dr. Posner, that's the bar and bat mitzvah trainer, and you'll see what you think. Fair enough? Okay. Fair enough. Is there anything else you'd like to discuss with me? I don't think so. Well, it's been a pleasure meeting you, Rivka. You're a charming young lady, and I want you to know my office door is always open. Say hi to your aunt and uncle and give them my best. You know, they're very caring people, and they care about you a great deal. Well, I suppose that's true. I know it's true, so let's stay in touch. Yes, Rabbi. Okay. How'd it go? It was okay. Uncle Sidney, I'm a little tired. He's a really nice guy, isn't he? I told you he was a nice rabbi. Yeah. Yeah, he's nice. Well, I'm a little tired. How goes it? Goes okay. Where are you going, Rivka? I'm going home. I've got to leave. Please, stay. Hey. You look terrible. Thanks for the compliment. No. I mean you look upset. Yeah, you know what? I am upset. My father just died. So I'm going home. I know why else you're upset. You're not supposed to talk about certain things with me, and I'm not supposed to ask. That's right. I'm sure you made that pretty clear to Rabbi Stein, so let's just stay away from each other. <sighs> Will you come back here? Listen, I just want to say something. Well? It's not fair. I can ask you anything I want, and I will. I always thought we were supposed to ask questions. I'm always being told Jews ask questions. Well, I don't intend to stop. Yeah, but you don't understand, Nikki. I don't want to fight any big battles. I told the rabbi I wouldn't get into these things with you all. I guess, at least until my bat mitzvah anyway. I'm gonna keep my word. Hey, this is between us, you know? This is our business. Come on. Let's sit down. I want to give you something. What is it? Open it. It's a necklace. It's a high necklace. I know that. You think I don't know Hebrew? What does it mean? It means life. Put it on. I can't wear this. Rivka, I like you. Please wear it. Please don't. I want you to have it. 
I can't. My father, Hamlet, he... Your father is Hamlet? No, no. I mean, I don't know. I can't explain. Please. Wear it. I just lost a friend. He's no longer with me. But you're here. You're alive. I am. Just like the high. I could use a friend. Okay, Nikki. Okay, I'll wear it. Once you put it on, Rivka, you can't take it off. This means we're... we're together. So... can I have your phone number? Wearing the high means I can call you and text you, and we can go for walks sometimes. And I'll never hurt you. Rina, it's his synagogue. I gotta follow the rules. He doesn't own the people. I don't like it, Rivka. You should be able to share what you believe. Yeah, but it's only until my bat mitzvah. That's all I promise. You know what? I want to change the subject. Guess what happened to me today? I couldn't guess. Okay, I'll tell you. Nikki gave me a necklace. What? You heard me? Whatever happened to Hamlet? I don't know. I guess he died. And Nicky's alive. And he's nice to me. He's just a friend like you are. Only... He's a boy. Not only that... He's calling me right now. I'll talk to you later. You don't waste time. Rivka, I had to call you. It's an emergency. So call 911. Not that kind of emergency. Listen, you have about a week to sign up for the Anchalutzi Israel trip. You gotta come with us. I don't know. My dad just died. It's a little soon. <sighs> come on. It'll be perfect for you. Please come with us. Mm, I don't think so. They say you can walk where Jesus walked. That's what they say. <laughs> hey, don't make fun of me. I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean it like that. Listen, pick up a brochure from the synagogue and talk to your aunt and uncle. It's the trip of a lifetime. Perfect for the bat mitzvah girl. I'll consider it. Now I'm going to bed. Who are you talking to? Um, I I'll talk to you later. I gotta go. <sighs> I don't know. This is... I don't know. It's too far away is what it is, Rifka, honey. I don't think you're ready for this. I agree. Why can't I go? Everyone else is going. Everyone. I don't know. Nikki and... And Sarah. Nikki Blavitz? I, I mean, you don't have to go to Israel to see him. You can see him right here. Uncle Sidney? That's not the reason! Look, it'll help me with my bat mitzvah training. Sydney, don't you think it's a little premature? They usually go a little older. They're taking pre-bar and bat mitzvah students to help them prepare. Look, there'll be adults there all the time. Uh, I hope so. Yeah. Maybe she could learn some Judaism about Judaism while she's there. I mean, I, it could help her. What's that supposed to mean? Uh, it, 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 you know, just what I said. Just, it means what I said. You mean, maybe it'll have an effect on me? Maybe I'll forget this foolishness? Maybe I'll become a real Jew? Did I say that? I didn't say that. Yes, you did. Okay, stop it, you two. I want to go to Israel. Okay, we'll think about it. They have to know soon. I'm going to my room. Ugh. 
teenagers. I forgot how difficult they could be. I thought you might want to see this. Oh, thanks. Hmm. Interesting. Have you seen the new guidelines for applicants to the Young Holocene Israel Tour? No, I haven't. I have. This one is perfect. It's you and it will keep you cool. You must be kidding. If that's me, then I don't know who <laughs> I am. What do you mean? It goes perfectly with a certain necklace, if you know what I mean. Will you please? And anyway, one look at that shirt and he'll climb all the way up Masada just to get away from me. Hmm, I guess you're right. It's not you. I'm just jealous. I wish I were going with you to Israel. I wish you guys were going too. You guys are like my best friends ever. Just try it on! No. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, we're looking forward to having you at B'nai Israel next week. I need to talk to you about something. We've got a girl here who's a messianic. Really? What's she doing there? It's a long story. Well, maybe you can do something about this girl. Get her out of this thing. Maybe. You just make sure she's there. I'll handle the rest. Okay. She's pretty young. They wanted to go on this young Halutzim trip to Israel. They're grabbing them pretty young these days. What about her parents? That's a long story too. I'll, I'll fill you in later, but she's the messianic. Well, I'll be ready for her. You just point her out to me. Have you read the new young Kalutzin guidelines? Can't say that I have. I'll email them to you. I'll look for them. Well, I just wanted you to know. I love helping rabbis like Stein out. Half the time they haven't a clue what to do. I'll see you next week. Okay. Jackie! Jackie! I go vault. Yeah, who is it? Ah, uh, Schuster, what is it? I'm busy. Tonight? What for? Yeah, yeah, she's already registered for the young Halutzim trip. All right, all right. We'll be there, 7 p.m. Jackie, guess what? Okay, Schuster, where's the sheet with the instructions with the name tags on the underwear? Sit down, Sydney. All right, everyone, let's get started. Is everyone here? We're here. Before we start handing out the young Kaluchi materials, we need to deal with some preliminary issues. First order of business, Rivka Margolis. What are you talking about? Let me say something, Alan. Go right ahead, Rabbi. Alan, please. Uh, folks, it's come to our attention that a certain stipulation has been added to the basic young Khalidzim registration form. However, under the present circumstances in Rivka's life... Wait a minute. And let him finish. Stop interrupting. Due to the circumstances in Rivka's life, I really believe we should ask for an exception. What? No way is she going with my Nikki or any of these kids. What are you talking about? Why don't you read the whole thing? Okay, okay, I will. Just give me a minute. It says, No youth shall be permitted to participate in the tour who is affiliated with Messianic Judaism, Jews for Jesus, or Jewish Christianity, and so forth. Well, I agree with the rabbi. And my daughter, Sarah, wants her to go. And so do I. The girl just lost her father. This isn't right. She should go. We have to follow the rules. Let the rabbi speak. Thank you, Jackie. These are my reasons for asking for an exception. Number one, Rivka just lost her father and she needs us to be there for her. I really believe it would be good for her to go to Israel right now. Number two, she has assured me that she will not proselytize any of our young people. Excuse me, Rabbi, but it's just like the National Board says right in that piece of paper. She's beyond the pale of the Jewish community. And by the way, she did proselytize my son. She simply answered questions from your son. Get off my niece's case, Blavitz. 
She missionized, just like your brother, Margolis. Leave my brother out of it. Please, let's be reasonable. The last thing this child needs right now is this kind of rejection and disappointment. I, I really believe the National Board will agree with me on this. I'm the president of this synagogue, and as such, I must make the final decision for the good of all concerns. In addition to the new application, we have the anti-missionary coming next week. How can we have him speak to us on this very issue and then allow her to take national board funds and go on this trip? That doesn't make any sense. Wait a minute. Shouldn't there be some kind of vote? No, this is not a voting matter. Not in this case. It's a rules and guidelines matter. The bat mitzvah is one thing. That's a synagogue issue. This is a national board issue. It involves national board funds. With all due respect, Rabbi. Look, I disagree. But if that's the decision, then it's... Who's gonna tell her? I'm sure not gonna tell her. You sure are gonna tell her. She's your niece. Or she can find out in a letter. Let's go, Jackie. And this is where I pay my dues. It's not about you, Sidney. It's about the rules and Rivka's beliefs. Then it's about me. She's living in my house. She's my niece, my family. She's almost my daughter now. Who are you to say she can't go on this trip? Let's go, Jackie. Can you believe those? You better think before you walk in that house, Sydney. She doesn't need to know now. <sighs> That's true. You're upset. I'm not upset. I'm not. <sighs> All right. You're dang right. I'm upset. Please think. I'm thinking. Well, how'd the meeting go? Okay. It went okay. Well, I actually... Uh, I mean... Sydney. Actually, it was horrible. What do you mean? Oh, my goodness. You're not going. I tried. The rabbi tried. But it's a new rule about messianics and blavits. It was... Nikki's father? He insisted. Well, why do you do that? And how could they all make that decision? It's complicated, honey. This man, the president, made the final decision. I'm sorry. I'm never going back there. I don't want to have my bat mitzvah there. I'm not going to have it anywhere. I don't want to go back and stand in front of all those people anyway. How could they be so mean? It's just these new rules. It's about national board money. It's complicated. I wish I never went there. I wish it wasn't here. I hate it here! Oh, brother. I'll tell you one thing. I'm not gonna hear that anti-missionary, no matter what he has to say. Not after this. Everybody will be staring at me. So what? I don't care what Blavitz thinks. I care what I might do. I've had enough of it after this. Hello? Did you hear? I heard. Rivka, if you're not going, I'm not going. That's all there is to it. I can't believe your dad did what he did. He hates me. I don't think so. He doesn't know you. If he knew you, he'd feel like I do. Remember the necklace. You can't stay back. If you're not going, I'm not going. I don't know how I'll tell my parents, but I will. I don't know, Nikki. Listen to me! 
My name is Adam Lerner. I only have a few minutes before he comes. Please listen. What's going on here? Don't listen to Yossi Cohen. I am a completed Jew in Jesus. He died for my sins. He's my Messiah. He can be your Messiah too if you just accept him. Uh, Isaiah said he'd be wounded for our sins. Uh, Micah said he'd be Stop! Be Lower! He's good, isn't he? Take a bow, Adam. Tell him about yourself. Well, I was born to a good Jewish family in Maryland. I was having some trouble in college, you know, uh, failing this course and that, uh, partying a little too much. <laughs> and, well, I saw these seemingly very nice people at a table in the student center. They said they were Messianic Jews and they had all the answers. I was with them for about a year until, uh, until Dr. Cohen rescued me, Baruch Hashem. Now I'm a real Jew. I made teshuva. And they're all really just Christians anyways. That's what they are, no longer Jewish. And they do these things like, like, like speaking in tongues and they, they, they drink it. Thank you, Adam. You can take a seat. Let's give Adam a hand. He works for our organization now. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, there are many young Jews like Adam who are being deceived, duped, sucked into this Christian cult. That's telling them. They spin their web with out-of-context verses from our holy Tanakh, the Jewish scripture. For example, the passage that Adam cited, Isaiah 53, is a passage that they often cite. Frankly, ladies and gentlemen, I find it offensive that they use that chapter. A chapter which describes the sufferings of the Jewish people at the hands of the very Christians who misinterpret it to be about Jesus. I know what they teach. You say that rabbis once taught it was about a suffering Messiah. What's it really about? It's about Jews being gathered together in synagogues which were then torched while Christians march around them singing, Christ, we adore thee. Jews recite Shema, Yisrael, there is only one God, while dying in agony and pain. And these Christians, these so-called Messianic Jews, rip these verses out of context like they're ripping out somebody's heart. And you will learn tonight how these people are being brainwashed by the deceptive Messianic missionaries. You will learn how to guard against their lives. For young people, beware. The target is you. Rabbi, the ushers have the packets? Uh, yes. Y yes, of course. Nikki, I was wondering how the meeting went, and what's going on with Israel? Please give me a call. No answer yet? Not good. I've been leaving messages for two days now, and nothing. Why won't he call me? He's my only friend. Besides you and Karen. Well, maybe he's grounded. Maybe he can't use his phone. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure that's it. He told his parents he's not going to Israel, and they probably took his phone away. Makes sense to me. It's him! He's texting me! What's it say? I... Can't see you anymore. Can't explain more now. Sorry. He'll be sorry. He doesn't even know what sorry is. Ouch. That must hurt. More than you know.
Excuse me, I want the Blavitz address. Oh, uh, well, we don't just Where's the rabbi? I want to speak to him. Well, you can't just Is be he here? Rivka, I've been meaning to talk to you. I feel like I want the Blavitz address, and she won't give it to me. I don't want anything else. That's all I want. Please just come into my office so we can talk. No, talk for a I just want the address. All right, I can give it to you. Although we don't usually do that, but I'm sure it's important. So Doris, please give her the Blavitz Street address. But when you're calmer, I would really like for you to come into my office. I want to share my heart with you about some decisions. I show some respect, young lady. When I'm respected, I'll show some respect. How dare you speak to your elders, and especially the rabbi that way. You apologize now. I'm very sorry. It won't happen again because I'm never coming back. Ever. I'm really sorry to hear that. That's a shame. Dr. Posner over there is the bar and bat mitzvah trainer. He's a very knowledgeable man. Among other things, he's also a very nice person. And I was really hoping the two of you would meet. I'm sure there's a lot he wants to teach me. But unfortunately, I won't be around. I'd better get going. Goodbye, Rivka. Goodbye, Rabbi. She's an insolent child. She's deeply hurt and in great pain. Can you blame her? Well, I guess that's why you're the rabbi and I'm not. A lot of pain, right, Eric? I would say so, Rabbi. After all, you are a therapist, among other things. Rabbi Stein, I've got Yossi Cohen on the phone. Could you give us a minute to talk about this situation? Yeah, excuse me, sure. Rabbi Stein, I thought we could enlist Yossi's help with this Rivka girl. Yossi, we just turned down her application for the Yan Halutzim tour because she's a messianic. Really? And her parents? They're both dead. She's staying with her aunt and uncle, members in good standing here. I see. What's your point, Alan? Rabbi, I think this girl needs a visit. You give me one hour with her, and I'll have her denying everything the missionaries ever taught her. Are you crazy, Alan? In the first place, she just got through telling me she's never stepping foot in this synagogue again. What's that got to do with it? We're dealing with a young Jewish soul here. He's right, Rabbi. No, he's not right. He's wrong. We say young people should not be pressured into the Messianic faith. We would be guilty of the same thing. Leave this poor girl alone. She's been through enough. This meeting is over. Over. Sorry. Maybe we can vote him out next year when his contract is up. In the meantime, we can't visit a member's home without his permission, at least not this one. Well, at least her aunt and uncle know how to get in touch with me. Shalom, friend. Shalom, Yossi. Nikki's not home, Rivka. I don't believe you. Don't press me. He's not home. It's okay, Dad. What are you doing, Nikki? I have something for him. Come out here. I'll be inside. Don't take too long. He won't. What's going on? I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Rivka. My parents, they don't want me to see you. I thought you were going to stand up to them. What about the necklace, the chai? Shh. Was it that stupid anti-missionary? I don't know. Not really, it's just some of what he said seemed to really make sense. Yeah? Well, there isn't going to be a bat mitzvah now. I can straighten out anything he said. I can answer all your questions now. I don't know. I didn't understand most of what he was saying. Look, I'm sure you're sincere in believing all these things about Isaiah, Micah, all the other us. And maybe you're right. But maybe he's right. I don't know. But you were right about one thing. I gotta do what my parents say. 
I gotta go to Israel. And you can't go. So who's stopping you from going? Did I tell you you couldn't go to Israel? Am I stopping you? But I thought we were friends. I thought you'd always be there for me. Are they just words? I can't, Rivka. I just can't. Things are too complicated now with all the other kids and... I can't believe you care what they think. Then here. You broke the chain. You broke your promise. Rivka! Rivka! It's you, from the synagogue. I need to talk to you, Rivka. I don't know you, and I'm not supposed to talk to men who call me from cars. Please, you don't understand. I'll scream. No, wait. Um, meet me in the coffee shop over there. Why should I? I want to talk about your bat mitzvah. Please. There's nothing to talk about. I'm not having it. Well, I think there is something to talk about. I knew your father. You were friends with my father? Martin Margolis, we were friends. <laughs> all right. I have 15 minutes, that's all. A deal. You knew my dad? Yes. Here. He gave this to me. Wow. This book meant a lot to Dad. He liked the fact that the author asked questions. That's a very Jewish thing. So I've heard. Rivka, I must tell you that, um, your father came to me for counseling after Ruthie, your mother, passed. Naturally, he was depressed and he was trying to be a good father to you felt he needed some help. Counseling? I thought you were a barn bat mitzvah teacher at the synagogue. Well, it doesn't pay all the bills. I'm a, I'm a therapist as well. I see. Did Rabbi Stein ask you to counsel me? Hmm. No. I'm here because I want to be your friend. I've had enough friends from B'nai Israel. Let me explain. Since I was able to give your father some help so that he could be a wise father to you, I feel I have a bit of a stake in your life, so to speak. Oh, you do? I could never replace him. But I'm here because I care about you. Well, I appreciate that, but Mr... Doctor. Dr. Posner, but please. Call me Eric. Okay. Eric, my father and I had a very precious relationship with God. And I know you want to help, but I just don't know if you could relate to that. No offense. So if you don't mind. Try me. What do you mean? I mean, you either understand or you don't. Well, I think I do understand. I understand enough to ask questions. Questions like, well, how would you could be a Buddhist, or a New Age, or even an atheist, and still be Jewish? But a Messianic Jew is not supposed to be Jewish anymore. Your father helped me to ask that question. And I think I know the answer. If Jesus was Jewish, and your father was Jewish too. And I don't know too many people more Jewish inside and out than your father. And such Jewish answers he gave, answers he lived by. For instance, um, one thing he used to say was, a prudent man overlooks, overlooks an, an insult. insult. Yes, that's right. Rivka, let me, let me get to the point. 
Um, I don't know you very well. But I believe what was special in your father is in you in special ways. I, I'm not talking about just what you believe, but how you believe it. You know, if your father were sitting here with us right now, I think he'd say, I know you were hurting. I know you were sad. I know you were angry and you have every right to be. And I know you were disappointed by the people that have let you down. But a prudent young woman who overlooks an insult would have her bat mitzvah at B'nai Israel and study with her father's friend Eric, who loved her father and cares about her. Rivka, I believe part of you will always regret not having your bat mitzvah. And I want to help you have it. Well, thank you for wanting to help. But there's something else. You see, I don't like standing up in front of people. I, I tend to avoid it. And with all those parents that didn't want me going on the trip, I just can't do it. Rabbi Khan had to convince me to do it at Adat Yeshua. But I don't think you can. So I've made up my mind. I can understand that. May I ask you one question before you go? Yes. Are you familiar with Elijah's flight from Jezebel's threats? Yes. First Kings 19. Malachim Aleph. I think I know where you're going with this. It's not about that. I'm not running away. Isn't it? Look, I, I just can't. Do you remember what made the difference for Elijah? I don't know, the, the thing that happened in the cave? I'm not in a cave. Look, it's been 15 minutes, I've gotta go. It was the sound of the spirit. It wasn't in the wind. It wasn't in the earthquake. There's a lot of wind around you, Rivka. And a lot of earth-shaking things have happened. All I'm asking is that you get quiet enough to hear the sound of the spirit about it. What would your father want? I know what he'd want. He told me how much he was looking forward to my bat mitzvah and how proud he'd be. And now, just like my mother, he won't be there. He'll know. And God will know. Well, maybe God knows I shouldn't have it. Maybe that's the best thing. I have enough confidence in your father's faith, in your faith, to know you'll get an answer to that question. We've been so worried about you. Both of us. We're so glad you're home. The rabbi called. He said you saw him and seemed upset. Are you okay? I think so. It's okay about the bat mitzvah. The most important thing is that you're okay. Uncle Sidney? Aunt Jackie? Well, sometimes I haven't been very grateful for what you've given me. I mean, I mean, thank you. Thanks for being there. Honey, you lost 
both your parents. Anyone would be upset about that. I mean anyone. Uncle Sydney, you're a big teddy bear. That's what you are. <laughs> well, well, I... Let's, let's sit down. Listen, I think I might need a little time to be alone. You know, some time to be by myself. Maybe in my room. Maybe on long walks. And I may not want anything to eat for a little while. What do you mean, a little while? I don't know. A few days, I don't know. You have to eat, Rivka. You're a growing girl. There's a time and a place. Yom Kippur, maybe. You'll get sick. Is it that you're depressed? No. No, it's not that. I'll be all right. Please trust me. It won't be long. And I'll drink juices. That's not enough for a growing girl like you. It's just that we care. And you could land in the hospital. I mean, everybody eats. Huh, especially you. Uncle Sidney, Aunt Jackie, Dad fasted. He knew when to drink juices and maybe even eat a little sometimes. I'll be okay. I see. You want to be just like him. That's natural. But you're young. And look what happened to him. I don't think it had anything to do with that. Rivka, we just want you to be happy. I know you do. I'll be okay, guys. Are you sure? You're so thin to begin with and, and just entering. I mean... I'll be okay. I'll be in my room. I love you both. Strange. I'll tell you. This is how they act just before committing suicide. Sydney, I don't think there's any danger of that. But still, it's strange. You know, she's ours, Jackie. She's ours now. I just don't want anything to happen to her. Honey, I'm just leaving a light meal outside your door. Okay, thank you. Yes, what is it? Honey, I'm just leaving a light meal outside your door. Thank you. Ah, Revka! <sighs> Will you go somewhere with me? Where? You'll see, you'll be home before dinner. I gotta call my parents. Go ahead. Hey, Mom, I gotta go somewhere with Rivka. I'll be home later, okay? Bye, love you too. All right, lead me on. Go, Mom, let's go. Going to your old house without telling anyone? We aren't going in, are we? Isn't that trespassing? Just pray my old key works. I think we can get arrested for this, Rivka. It looks so... so... So empty. Yeah.
just as I thought. Not even the old bean chair. I'm sorry. I should have asked my mom to ask your uncle. I promised I'd get it for you. Hey, it's okay. I didn't come here for the bean chair. So why did you come here? I came to pray for wisdom. Couldn't you do that at your uncle's house? Hey, let's order a big pizza. I'm hungry. Let's ruin our appetite big time. Um, actually, I'm not eating. Are you sick? I'm fine. Well, I'm hungry. I just want you to be here for a little while, because you're my best friend. I'm here, but I'm sorry. I think I need to go soon. That's okay. I think I need to be here alone for a little while. You sure you're okay? I'm fine. Well, okay, I guess I'll go. You're sure you'll be okay? I'm fine. Just pray for me. I will. Love you. You too. Well, here I am in my old room where mom and dad used to tuck me into bed. Only, no mom, no dad, no bed. Only me. And you. So, where do I start? I guess I need to begin by saying, I need to hear the sound of your spirit. So, should I have the bat mitzvah at B'nai Israel? Because all those people make me so nervous. And with these people, I'd be more nervous than, than, <sighs> I'm tired, God. It's, it's been a long day and I'm hungry. I think it's what they call low blood sugar, <sighs> but you would know that. I wanna go by the sea Just to see If you're there Build me some wings Cause I think You must be Mazel tov on your bat mitzvah. Now, remember to eat all of your vegetables and make sure you leave room for some chocolate cake. I'm stuffed. That wasn't the sound of the spirit. That was the sound of my stomach. Oh my goodness, it's getting dark. I wanna pass through this desert just to see if you're on the other side. Build me a sand mountain so I can stand tall and see what is your high. You've 
Luca. Oh, where were you? We were worried sick. Are you okay? I'm fine now, Jackie. Wow, Rabbi Khan, I miss this place. I miss your sermons and I miss you. Yeshua.com with a podcast. It's free, of course. Yeah, but it's not the same. It's not the same around here without you. We all miss you very much. I think it's good that you're with your aunt and uncle right now. That you'll have your bat mitzvah there. Don't you? Well, that's why I'm here. I decided not to have it. But then I met Dr. Posner. Yes. Eric Posner. He knew my father, too. That's true. He's an interesting man. He says he's a question asker. So what question did he ask you? Well, he asked if I would listen for the sound of the Spirit about whether to have my bat mitzvah, like Elijah. That sounds like Eric. So I've kind of been fasting, which is freaking out my aunt and uncle. I know how they feel. How long has it been? A few days. At your age, you should eat. Starting today, Rivka. Are you drinking? Yes, juices. Rabbi Khan, I have to know whether to do my bat mitzvah or not. Of course, I don't want to, but... Well, maybe my father would want me to. Good point. You are some amazing young woman, Rivka. Uh, tea, juice, water, lemonade. Lemonade. And uh, cooking? Um, no thanks. Um, I was thinking. I might have my bat mitzvah, just thinking. The sound of the spirit. No, just the sound of my thinking. And I didn't say I was gonna have it. I understand. Do you know when the date would be? Let me check for openings. Okay, well, there's not much open, but... Oh, here's a good one. It's on Passover. From Exodus. Vayomar panai lechu, vani chotilach. That's very beautiful. Maybe you should do the honors. You know it way better than I do. Oh, as a therapist, I usually let the patient do all of the work. That way they experience the growth. Here, try reading verse 15. Vayomer elav im en panecha hochim al ta'alenu mize. It's very good. They've taught you very well over there at Adat Yeshua. Uh, Please give my congratulations to Rabbi Khan. I can make an MP3 of everything for you by next week. What do you think? I didn't say I would have it. I can only hold the date for so long. This offer is only good for a little while. Give me two days. I'll know by then. Okay. I'll hold your reservation. And, um, I'll live if you say no. Exodus 33, 14. And he said, My presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. Then he said to him, I guess Moses, 
If your presence does not go with us, do not bring us up from here. It makes sense. I could really use your presence and rest right now after all I've been through. Not that I'm complaining or anything. Wait a minute. Yeah, yeah, you know what? I am complaining. I just lost my closest friend and dad. And I don't like it. Listen to me, O house of Jacob, and all the remnant of the house of Israel, who have been upheld by me from birth, who have been carried from the womb, even to your old age, I am he, and even to gray hairs I will carry you. I have made, and I will bear. Even I will carry, and will deliver you. But the Lord was not in the wind, and after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still small voice. The sound of the Spirit. So it was, when Elijah heard it, that he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood in the entrance of the cave. Suddenly a voice came to him and said, What are you doing here, Elijah? What am I doing here? I think you're ready. You do? Yes. Your father would be very proud of you. I'm sure he will be. Yes, he will. Do you have your short speech? Um, I don't think I'm going to say anything. <laughs> yes, you, you've told me. Well, just what you're doing speaks for itself. It takes a lot of courage to go through with it. I guess that's why they call it a mitzvah. I don't know if I'd call it courage. Maybe it's the sound of the spirit but it's definitely not my first choice. Well, that takes even more courage. You know what? I don't know another young person as ready to take this step as you are, Rivka. Then why do I have such a stomach ache? <laughs> well, someone, as they say, sweat great drops of blood after he said, not my will. Isn't that what it says? At least you're not doing that. Good point. I guess he really read the book. Well, thanks for everything. I wouldn't be doing this without you. Yeah, just use that same list that you did be... Oh, okay. Eric! Come here a second. Jacob Bluestein has a very interesting idea. Really? Yeah, okay. come here. I'm all ears. <laughs> you look so beautiful, Rivka. If only your father were here to see you. Thanks, Aunt Jackie. My mom used to do my hair just like you are. You're really good at it. Is everything okay? <laughs> <laughs> What's so funny? Oh God, this is it. I wish I wasn't doing this, but 
I'm not even gonna ask. I already know the answer. Well, first, I feel I need to tell you, I almost didn't have my bat mitzvah. I prayed a lot about it, and I even sort of forgot to eat. <laughs> Actually, the verses I looked at were really helpful with my decision. My presence will go with you, and I will give you rest. It's that presence and the rest that comes with it that sustains me up here today after so recently losing my closest friend in the whole world, my dad. When I was in the park thinking about whether to do this, I saw a father and his little girl. He put her on his shoulders like my dad used to do. And I felt, well, I don't know how to explain it, kind of carried. Carried all the way to this place today. So here I am. <laughs> and I'm really nervous. But I think I finally learned something in the hardest year of my short life. I think I finally learned to do what my father taught me through Proverbs, to overlook insults and focus on the good things. Good things like my aunt and uncle who love me. And friends old and new who supported me as friends should. Some new friends were kind when I was first here and was a stranger who needed a friend. Thank you. And to my friends that adopt Yeshua, including Rabbi Khan, you're all great comfort to me. Thank you, Rabbi Stein. I know you stood up for me during a difficult time. And Dr. Posner, Eric, you're the best bat mitzvah teacher a girl could ask for. You gave me freedom and respect. You encouraged me to ask all the right questions, as all you should. And then God answered me. That's why I'm here. I love you. I want to say I was kind of forced to grow up the day my dad died. And some people said I was becoming a woman. But I know on my bat mitzvah that in some ways, I'm still a little girl. A little girl who has a big family, who cares about her. And I need all of you. Thanks to those people in this room and the synagogue, who have shown me kindness in so many different ways. You know, my dad and uncle didn't see each other for a very long time. 
and I missed out not getting to know him and Aunt Jackie. I'm so thankful they met up just before my dad died. What if they hadn't? That would make a sad thing so much sadder. There's a verse in a book that I realize isn't read here, but I think we would all agree on what it has to say. My dad had me memorize it because he loved it so much. So here's to you, Dad. I'm finally here. Your young Jewish daughter of Rebecca taking her place. Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. It does not parade itself. Is not puffed up. It does not behave rudely. It is not provoked does not seek its own, thinks no evil, does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. I love you all. Thank you. You did it. I'm so proud of you. Thanks, Rena. Courage. Real courage. I guess you heard the sound of the spirit. Congratulations. <laughs> Thanks. A wonderful job. I was quelling. Aww. You know, I don't need to tell you how proud your father would be and how proud I am. Thank you. Oh, Uncle Sidney, Aunt Jackie, this is my rabbi, Rabbi Khan from Adat Yeshua. She did great, didn't she? Yes. Well, she is her father's daughter, and her uncle and aunt's niece, and a wonderful girl. You know, Rabbi, I think Rivka needs to spend some time with her friends at Adat Yeshua. Why don't, uh... You go worship with Rabbi Khan this weekend. I think that's a great idea. I'm sure everyone misses you there. Oh, I love you guys. <laughs> oh, I know. Yeah. Yeah, it was really great. Well, congratulations on a great speech. Oh, thank you, sir. You're hey, welcome. listen, I'm going to have to call you back. OK, OK, bye. Congratulations on your bat mitzvah, and this is for you. Well, well, thank you so much. You're welcome. Well, I think it would be a good idea to visit your parents' grave on this special day. They would be so proud of you. Okay, but can we get going already? Yeah. Oh, wait! I just remembered. Jacob Bluestein gave me a card. It's in my purse. I better put it with the others. Okay. Jacob Bluestein? That was nice of him. Well, uh, throw it in, throw it in the pile, and you know we'll look at it later. It's getting dark soon. Oh, I wonder what he gave her. Well, we'll find out later. Okay. I was just curious. Okay. Well, I mean, it doesn't have a lock on it. It only takes a second to open it. The members of B'nai Israel Synagogue have collected this money so that you can visit the land of Israel with your Uncle Sidney and Aunt Jackie. I know you will appreciate it more than many girls your age. Love your family at B'nai Israel. Oh, look at all those zeros! 
we, we've never been to Israel. I, I can't believe we're going. It's a blessing. I, I can't believe it. Hun, hun, we need to go. I love you, Daddy. I miss you so much. Honey, we can stay as long as you want. I guess we can go now. I'm glad we came. Can we come back? Sure. Anytime. I'll uh, catch up in a minute. Okay. Don't be long. We're going to head back now. Well, Marty, we took her in just like you asked. And I must say, it's been a pleasure. She's great, Marty. Thank you for everything you taught her. And I mean everything. I promise to take good care of her. You have my word. Oh. It won't be so long this time. I won't forget you or what you did for our daughter. Every day. 
Once 